is morning.
we'll say thank you, Quark, for the message and song that you share with us this morning. And again, to say, Ms. Sophia Clark, we thank you for being us with the violin today and music. Appreciate it so very much. Congregation, I appreciate your presence and I appreciate your singing the congregational hymns. I just appreciate everyone for what you do for the Lord. Praise Him and honor Him. For today, we focus on God's Holy Word, looking at the Gospel of Luke. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. God's holy word tells us a wonderful and holy story about the birth of Jesus. Luke chapter 2. And it came to pass in those days that went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth, unto Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. May God add His richest blessings to each of you all as we share this reading of God's holy word. Messiah has come. He shared for several weeks anticipated Christmas. Prophetic word that the prophet said God told them to sell the world about and coming Messiah. Today we declare the Messiah has come. Jesus Christ, the Christ child born in Bethlehem. Out of humility because of no room in the inn, taking a place in a stable, if you please. Jesus is an infant child, wrapped in swaddling clothes placed in a manger. Strips of linen, some would say. Some translations put it that way. Those who say there's a strips of cloth or linen wrapping that child in humility. Nothing special, great, grandiose or anything like that. Just opportunity to place a child wrapped in swaddling clothes in a manger. All this comes around to fulfill prophetic word. Mary and Joseph home was in Nazareth of Galilee. But the prophets had said that Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. Think about that. God has a way of putting all the details together. The story had been told for hundreds of years about when Messiah would come and where it would be. And now then, the time came and sometimes we say, well, we criticize our government today. Not intentionally, but sometimes we do. But back in those days, they didn't like it when the Roman government said it's got to be all out taxation. All Roman government, all Roman world will be taxed. Caesar Augustus said the world should be taxed. Of course, talking about the Roman world. Taxing was made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. So everybody went to be taxed. Everyone to his own city. But now you say, I thought Jesus was born in Bethlehem and Mary and Joseph were from Nazareth. See, the government was involved. God put it all together in some way. God's Word, God's plan. And how then they would have to go from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Going from Nazareth to Bethlehem for that taxation to occur. Register there in your hometown, where your background, where your ancestors were, where you were from. So Mary and Joseph went then out of Nazareth all the way to Bethlehem. The city was in the house of the lineage of David the place in Bethlehem where the baby would be born. Maybe the Messiah has come. We celebrate that on Christmas Day. I hope you had a great time with your family. 
whatever your family does and friends or whatever you do on Christmas Day. I hope that you yesterday remember not just about presents we have on the tree, but it's about God's gift to us, Jesus Christ, the Christ of Christmas. Christmas, the real story of Christmas is the story of Jesus being born, placed in the manger in Bethlehem, fulfilling a prophetic word from hundreds of years. The Messiah has come. This Jesus, this child born in Bethlehem, this is Messiah. Messiah has come. The taxing had a part in bringing them to there, to this place that God had a plan put together for Mary and Joseph there for the child to be born while they were there. Now when they were there, firstborn son, Mary, laid in the manger because there was no room for them in the inn. No room. In those days, travel would have been difficult compared to what you're traveling. If you have traveled some during the uh, Christmas holiday, you might think travel is complicated in our times. But can you imagine traveling in those ancient days? been different altogether from what we experience today. And I'm sure reservations, as we think of today, just probably didn't exist in those days. But uh, when Mary and Joseph got there, they were sure there'd be a place somewhere, an inn or a hotel, a motel, we'd call it today, uh, where they could uh, stay once they reached the, this destination. But because of the taxation, so many people were there, and there was no rooms left. Have you ever been traveling? And you uh, didn't really make a reservation for wherever you expected to be at night time, and, and you got there and all the hotels were filled up. You go on the next town and all those places are filled up. Uh, it's not a pleasant way to travel, is it? Mary and Joseph found no room in the inn. But someone somewhere, the details are not given to us, but they found a place, we put it in our terminology today, in a barn, a stable. Some would say it's a cave where they kept some animals, whatever. So we're not exactly sure the details uh, are unclear, especially from the Bible. Other traditions have been passed along. But the manger may have been not just as we normally see them in Christmas programs, and Christmas cards. It might have really been just a manger hewn out of stone where they could put the hay in there for the cattle to eat. But whatever the detail was, whichever way it was, it doesn't really matter. The humility of knowing a place that's really designed for a place for feeding the cattle became the only place that could lay the manger, lay the child in the manger, away in the manger. God's plan for Messiah, Messiah has come in this story, fulfilled the prophetic word God has kept His promise, Messiah is born. No room in the end. One word I want to share today to encourage us to say, in this Christmas season, or Christmas day plus one, in the days ahead, make room in your heart, make room in your schedule, make room in your life for Jesus Christ. I'm sure we all feel like we just keep a busy schedule. We've got a lot to do. A lot to do to get ready for Christmas. A lot to do to move on to the new year and all these sort of things. A lot's going on. But old friends today, make room for Jesus. Make room for Jesus. I'm sure the innkeeper didn't know Jesus was about to be born in Bethlehem that day. Hadn't reserved a special room there. But God found a way. God worked through the details to let there be the special place. The special place where the child was born. Let us celebrate this Sunday, this Lord's Day, the day after Christmas, let us celebrate the Messiah has come. God has kept His promises. God has kept His Word. His Word's fulfilled and continues to be and will be fulfilled until Jesus comes again. God will keep His Word. Messiah has come. Let that bring for us hope. Hope in Messiah. Not just the hope that came back in New Testament times, but let us realize the message for our generation today, that blessed hope today, in these days, in this time frame, the hope Jesus provides for individuals, for families, for churches, for our community, for our country, and by the grace of God for the world. Hope. This is not a time to be hopeless and in despair. This is a time for celebration. Messiah has come. Christ has come. The blessing of what God can do and will do in the world is being fulfilled in Jesus Christ then and now. If today seems like a day for you to be discouraged, if this is a day to seem like things are hopeless, 
We look at the world and what's going on. We say, how can there be joy in the world? The joy in the world is not about the circumstances of the world around us. The joy in the world is Jesus Christ. In Christ in your heart and in your home. Let us rejoice. Messiah has come. There's hope. In a struggling world. In a struggling family. In the life of an individual struggling for whatever the reasons are for the struggle. There's a blessed hope. In the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is that hope. Turning your heart and your life to the Lord makes all the difference in all the world. What can we share? Even in the funeral time this past week, we share a hope for a family to realize the son has passed away here just a few days before Christmas. But there's a hope. What is that? He was a Christian. He was a Bible-believing Christian. And we believe when he passed away from his land of life, he went to be with the Lord in heaven above. There's hope for that family. They'll see him again as they're Christians when their time to leave this earth. Beyond that, friends, today, no matter what the circumstances of life, let us realize there is hope because of Jesus. Messiah has come and that gives us hope. We can think of it this way. Hope has come in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the reason, the foundation. He is the center of our reason to have hope today and not be discouraged at all the things you see that's wrong going on in the world and say, Jesus can make a difference. He has made a difference. He will make a difference. He'll make a difference around the world if we turn our hearts and lives to Jesus Christ. Room in your heart for Jesus. Now then, there's another part of this story. Yes, while this is happening in a, in a cattle stall or a cave or whatever it was there in Bethlehem where the manger was and the child was born, now then the angels appeared again. An angel appeared and the night sky lit up to some shepherds out tending their flocks by night, watching the flocks, caring for the flocks, looking after the livestock. The shepherds were looking after the sheep. Interesting, this Jesus born in the manger, placed in the manger, born to the Virgin Mary, would one day be known as the Good Shepherd. So here the angels appeared to the shepherds. Here's the word they shared. The country, in the country, shepherds were buying in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. The angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them. The great light from heaven lit, lit the sky. And they were afraid. The angel said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. So yes, the message of the angels. The angels announced to the shepherds the great word. The word. Glory to the Lord. Glory to God. That glory lit up the night sky. They have a story, a message to those shepherds. Why would the, of all the people in the world to get the news from a messenger from God about the birth of Messiah, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, to go to the shepherds? I believe it's because of the humility factor that Almighty God, great God of the universe, sending His precious Son to this world, sending Him as a baby. I like the part our cantata shared last Sunday. Only God would believe a baby would be the beginning point for one who would save a broken world. But now these shepherds looking after their sheep, the angel comes to tell them, bring the message to them, to let them know God's plan to use the humble people of the world, ordinary people, people just going about their daily task, get the word to them that God has done something special. The angel spoke to the shepherds, gave them the word. Not be afraid, but this unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Christ the Lord. This shall be a, a message for all people. And then it says, This shall be a sign. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. So what had just happened in Bethlehem already, the angels know about it also, and they are able to tell the shepherds and give them the sign of what they can look for. When you go into Bethlehem, how are you going to find this baby Jesus? Not at the end. He's going to be somewhere lying in a manger. Born this day a Savior. Christ the Lord. What a word. Christ the Lord. A Savior for the whole world. You can find Him wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. Friends, today, we want to know today, beyond a shadow of doubt, 
that we can find this thing here. We want to know. We want you to know. I hope already you believe. I hope because you believe, you already know about Jesus. You know this Scripture passage, but without apology, I'll bring it to our attention again today because I want you to know you too can find this Savior. Do you know this Jesus as the Son of God, the Savior of the world? Do you know this Jesus as your Savior? Do you know the message the angel shared is a message for you, not just the shepherds long ago, not just the people of Bethlehem, but it's for us today. It's still God's message for us today. Here in Ellenboro, we might think, well, who are we going to tell anything about this? Tell everybody you know. He said this is a message for all people. We talk about it, pray for our missionaries, give offerings to give our, for our missionaries around the world, and, and continue to pray for missions because they're out there in other countries of the world telling people about Jesus. But we also have a task to tell people around here about Jesus. Just ask the question, do you know anybody today? Do you know anybody that does not really go to church on a regular basis on Sunday? I'm not talking about the people in the nursing home now who, whose health is not good and they can't attend. I'm not talking about the people who are sick at home can't make it today because of COVID or other health issues. That's not it. But about people who have the body strength and physical able, but they just don't go to church. They just don't care enough about Jesus. Don't care enough about the Word of God. Don't care enough about Messiah to go to church. Folks, today we must tell others about Jesus. We must tell the world about Jesus. We need to let the message of the angels touch our hearts and our lives today. We need to find hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to know there is a Messiah. We need to know that Messiah is our Lord, our Savior. That's our hope. Find Him. Where do we find Him today? Do we have to go to somebody's barn? See how they feed the cattle and try to find Jesus at the manger? If that will help you, Think about the Bible verses and what happened that day long, long ago. But I can also believe this. If we'll open a Bible, if we'll read the Bible just like we read today and all the rest of it to go with it. Read that Bible and then spend some time. Spend some time. Those shepherds probably didn't have a long mind except sending the sheep there out there taking it easy, settling down for the night. Whatever the sheep do, settling down for the night. God got their attention. He lit up the sky. God can get your attention if you would have said a quiet moment of time, whether it's in church or in your home or wherever you might be. A quiet moment of time. Let God light up your life. Let the light shine in your heart and your life and realize this story is true. This story is real. God really wants you to know Jesus who was born in Bethlehem long ago is a Messiah, the Christ, the Savior of the world. He wants you to know Him too. We receive the message of the angels from the Bible. We can have that quiet place, that quiet time, that special moment when it will be a dawning moment for us. We sometimes see the little cartoon versions of the light bulb that shines above your head. You know, it's like you now the lights come on in your head, you know, and you see the light bulb there. An idea has been born. Or whatever. Folks, today, let us realize that's, that's a cartoon version of the idea of when Christ lights your heart, lights the sky around you, you know it doesn't have to be a bright light all of a sudden like what happened that night for the shepherds, but insight, insightful light to know Christ makes the difference. Christ came to forgive my sin and yours. He can save the world. We we'll trust Him. Asking Jesus now to come into our hearts and our lives. We find Jesus. We can find Him in church, in our homes. Wherever we are, we can find Christ. Trust Him today. He'll find you. He is the God who will search for us till He finds us. And will we hear and answer the door when He knocks on your heart's door? The book of Revelation tells us a picture about Jesus standing at your heart's door, knocking at your heart's door. Can we realize... That's part of the Christmas story. Jesus came into the world and began to knock on the doors of our hearts and our lives. Still, that's going on. Some people yesterday or today may hear the message of Jesus for the first time. They may or may not respond. Is there someone in this congregation today that is this the first time you've ever heard the message of Jesus? Probably not. But if you are here today, I want you to know the story of Jesus is the real story of Christmas. 
If you already are a believer, I thank God for that special moment, that special time when you found the Lord and welcomed Him into your heart. Now, that dawn, that light dawned in your heart and your life. That light bulb lit up and you said, this is real and I must trust Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Would you believe that today? And if we believe, may we find a way to share the message with others. We receive the message. God has provided for us. There are many ways that message can come to us in our time. But let's take another step here. And so, and the angel told the shepherds all about it. And then, verse 13 says, Suddenly there was a, with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Suddenly, not just one angel, but a heavenly host, a great number, more like an army of angels, if you please, a whole host of angels, the sky is full, if you please, a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God, and all together sharing this great message. Learn this Bible message. Learn this Bible verse. You want to have a little homework assignment if you've not already memorized this Bible verse. Memorize this. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. That's a good Bible verse. It's good to learn it. It's good to know it in your heart. It's good to know this summarizes many of the things that Jesus is going to tell us along the way. The multitude angels sang this praise to God. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God. And peace on earth. Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Peace on this earth. We still live in troubled times. There's so many individuals today who are living troubled lives. The news tells us all about the troubled lives. Well, let us hear the news today. There's peace on this earth because of Jesus. Wherever we turn to Jesus, there is peace. Even in the midst of war, there can be peace. In the midst of war. I heard a testimony of a man one time. He was asking about, can you remember where you were when you became a Christian? I probably told you this before, but I'm going to tell you again now. And this man said, he was flying about so many thousand feet above Germany when he became a Christian. He was in one of those bombers during World War II. He became a Christian flying over Germany. It can happen in a war plane in the middle of battle. God can touch your heart and your life. He became a dedicated Christian. But that's where it first was. I heard a Navy man tell it this way. He became a Christian. Several years ago, some men in the congregation I served as a pastor. He said, I can tell you when I became a Christian. Navy man manning a gun in the Pacific Ocean. And their, plane was, their, their ship was under attack by the Japanese planes. He said, I can see those planes coming. He said, it looked like they were flying right down the barrel of the gun I was trying to fire. He said, I became a Christian right there on the battleship deck. Seeing a Japanese plane come right toward me. He lived through it. He lived through it. Old friends and Dave. What is the circumstances? It might be Difficult circumstances, it might be good, quiet, peaceful times. But let us all come to that time, that moment in time when we can say with the angels, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. The goodwill. Sharing concern and care for one another. Peace among friends. Peace in the family. Peace in our neighborhood. Peaceful neighborhoods. But oh, peace in the world. Because so many people learn to trust and believe in Jesus. Let there be peace in this world today. The angels saying, Glory to God in the highest on earth. Let there still be peace on this earth and goodwill toward men from God. Goodwill one toward another of those who believe and trust in Jesus. And may we find a way to live in peace with all around us. So much as is possible, let the message of Jesus help us to live in peace. With one another. God is speaking to us today, helping us to know on this Sunday after Christmas, Messiah has come. Hope has come to the world. The assurance of salvation has come to the world. Are you assured of your salvation today? Do you know beyond a shadow of doubt, Jesus is the Son of God, the Savior of the world, fully man but fully God, the only one who can take away your sin.
trust Him, call on Him, ask Him today to forgive your sin, save your soul. The only one who can prepare you to be a part of the family of God. Family get-togethers are great for Christmas, but don't think about what it means when the family of God can celebrate around the throne of God in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ someday in eternity. Someday in eternity. What a family gathering that shall be if we know Jesus. Friends, today I invite you today to realize the Messiah has come. He came to be your Messiah, your Savior. Rejoice in the Lord God. Answer the door when Jesus knocks. If you've not already answered the door, let Him in. Let Him into your heart, into your life. Trust the Lord. This is the right time to get things right and be ready to praise God all this week, all the new year, Whatever comes our way, still give praise and honor to the glory of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't know what's coming next year, but we know God's going to be with us through it all. Celebrate the Lord. Celebrate the Lord. Hope has come because of Jesus. In a moment, we're going to give an invitation to Him. But before we do, we're going to have a prayer. And I ask you today, if there's someone here today who's never made that decision for Jesus, would you decide today to give your heart and life to Jesus Christ. If you want to come to share with me as we sing a hymn, share with me at this altar today. You give your heart and your life to Jesus. You'd recognize this is the day. You know the time, you know the place. We don't have to be in a, a bomber over Germany. This can be a time and place today where we say we met the Lord and let Him come in to be our Savior and our Lord right now in our lives. Let's pray together and let's sing. And you come as God will lead you to the altar. Dear Lord in heaven, just want to thank you, Lord, today for the tremendous and wonderful story of Jesus born of the Virgin in Bethlehem, laid in the manger. Thank you, Lord, for the angel who spoke to the shepherds long ago, filling their heart with joy and gladness, so much so they wanted to go and see and find this Jesus, and they did according to the Scripture. Dear Lord, speak to our hearts now, help us to know for sure that we have responded to this Savior. And we know this blessed hope because we're trusting in Jesus Christ, the Messiah, to be our Messiah, to be our Savior, to be our God, our Lord. Lord, forgive us of our sins, our mistakes, our faults, our failures. Take us and use us, Lord, now as the children of God, with you and a blessed hope in the Lord. Thank you for the message of Christmas, and thank you, Lord, for helping us to share this message with others, believing in ourselves, and sharing the great joy for us. We'll make this prayer in the blessed name of the Christ of Christmas. Amen. In the moment as we're going to sing a hymn today, O little town of Bethlehem, as we sing this hymn today, as God speak to your heart, we invite you to come. Celebrate resurrection. Celebrate forgiveness of sins. Celebrate there is a Messiah. He provides hope for you and for the world. As we stand as we sing, would you come and lead Give your heart and your life to Jesus.